Congress. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Garland, what is a confidential human source? Well, it's, a, uh, it's an FBI term. I don't know all the technicality, all but right. it's... Here, let me define it for you. It's in your own policy here. Okay. An individual who is believed to be providing useful and credible information to the FBI from any authorized information collection activity and from whom what the FBI expects or intends to obtain additional useful and credible information in the future, all right? And whose identity... Uh, information or relationship with the FBI warrants confidential handling. So these guys are individuals. You pay them $42 million a year. Did you know that? The, the, the IG said you're paying these sources $42 million a year. Did you know that? I know informants are It's paid. $42 million a year. So do you believe that they're credible? They're valuable. The FBI is using these guys. We're paying them a lot of money. Would you agree with that? I agree. Some are more Very credible. good. So they're more credible. credible you're than paying others. them a lot of money. You got a lot of them out there. So let me paint the picture for America. Hunter Biden joins Burisma in 2014. Burisma, very, very corrupt Ukrainian energy company. He has no experience in oil and gas. He admits it. He says, I don't have any experience. I know why I'm there. I have a dad. I have with me a document called the FD-1023. Have you seen this? You're yes, familiar I, with it? I, yeah, okay. I, I it's used by it. the FBI, everybody in America. It's used by the FBI. It is a confidential human source reporting document dated June 2020. You're familiar with it. In this document, the FBI's confidential human source says Burisma, now the corrupt company, needed to keep Hunter on the board so everything would be okay. And according to the human source, they hired Hunter Biden to, quote, protect us through his dad for all kinds of problems. Mr. Gardeland, does that concern you? The okay, it should. I got limited time. Remember, your sources are credible, trustworthy, on, honest, and valuable. Are you familiar with Victor Shokin? The document that you're Who is Mr. Victor Shokin? So I got three minutes left. You want me to answer that? Yeah, Victor Shokin. Who is he? I, I don't know. Do you want okay, me to answer Okay, he's the, the first prosecutor, question? folks. He's the prosecutor that was, he, he oversees all the corruption in Ukraine. We know there's corruption over there. For the American people watching, after a few months, a few months after Hunter Biden joined the Burisma board, Viktor Shokin was named Prosecutor General for Ukraine to target corruption. And one of his investigations was into Burisma. In this FD-1023 document, the human source clarified that Burisma's CEO, the man in charge of Burisma, said he has many text messages and recordings that show he was coerced to make such payment to ensure Victor Shokin was fired. Matter of fact, there were 17 of them. Mr. Garland, it's clear, Joe Biden wanted Shokin fired so he would stop looking into Burisma, where Hunter was on the board. Would you agree? All right, let's let the American people decide. Play the clip. Play the clip. I remember going over convincing our team, our <coughs> others, to convincing us that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, for, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from Pay attention, uh, sir, Yatsenyuk please. that they would take action I, against I'm the looking. state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to press conference. Said, "No, nah. I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, "You're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here." And I think it was what six hours. I looked. I said, "I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money." Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> Got fired, and they put in place someone who there was solid. Mr. Attorney General, what you just saw, there was Joe Biden in his arrogance and role as the vice president in this country saying, if you don't fire Shokin, the United States isn't given the $1 billion loan. Why would Joe Biden say that as the vice president? Why would he say such a thing? Was it policy? Was it our policy at the time? Yes or no? It wasn't. I have documents here. Interagency policy committee dated October Point of information. 15, is the gentleman ever Shulkin, going to let the gentleman I'm on my time pipe down. Saying Shokin had made significant to the reforms. From Texas. He's made significant reforms. Shokin did. Matter of fact, John Kerry says he was impressive. And you know, within a few months after Shokin was fired, they appoint a prosecutor that said, We're not going to look into Burisma anymore. Cancel that. Forget it. We're not looking into Burisma. Boom. Here comes the million dollars. Joe Biden threatened the Ukrainian president and the prime minister. Everybody can see it, the fire Shokin, or the United States won't give the billion dollars. If that is not quid pro quo, sir, what is? 
I will tell you what it is, and America agrees with me. It's bribery, and it's impeachable. Are you going to do something about it? I bet you're not, and that's why you, sir, also need to be impeached. I yield back. Time of the gentleman has expired. The uh, chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Moran. Attorney General, uh, you were a line assistant at, uh, U.S. attorney for years and a federal judge after that. You have significant experience with the processes surrounding criminal investigations. Tell me, what's the normal uh, process for obtaining and executing a search warrant? You go to a federal judge, you present an affidavit, uh, which you believe um, constitutes probable cause. The federal judge looks at it, makes a determination of whether it does constitute probable cause. He then signs a search warrant, and it's then executed. And what's the purpose of a search warrant? The purpose of a, of a search warrant is uh, um, uh, to find um, um, either um, uh, to find evidence of a crime uh, for which there has to be probable cause that it's in that location. When executing a search warrant on a location that may contain evidence of a crime, what benefits are there for doing so without notifying the putative defendant or the target of the investigation or his attorney ahead of time that execution of the search warrant is forthcoming? Sometimes you make notifications, sometimes you don't. If you think that uh, the person uh, who has the evidence of a crime is obstructing justice or is going to move the evidence or will secrete it if you warn them in advance, then you don't give it. If you don't have then those concerns, you may give advance notice. Yeah, so in, in the instance of uh, not withholding, uh, withholding notice, you do so because sometimes they're going to actually move the evidence if you give them a heads up, correct? It's a general hypothetical matter, yes. And in most instances, in your experience of decades of law enforcement, have you seen that more, more times than not, you give a heads up to the defendant, or is it odd to give a heads up to the defendant? Um, I can't actually make a statistical resolution. I, I think it's the case that the government tries to use less intrusive methods if they can, and if they can't, use more intrusive and more emergency methods. I, I agree with that. But typically, when, when you're going to execute a search warrant, typically, I think people would understand this from common knowledge, you would not actually give the heads up. Would you agree with that? I think as a general matter, that's correct. IRS Supervisory Special Agent Gary Shapley, one of the whistleblowers, testified that AUSA Leslie Wolf told investigators, quote, Optics were a driving factor in the decision not to request a search warrant for the guest house at the Biden's Delaware residence where Hunter Biden had stayed for a time. AUSA Wolf further told the investigators that, quote, there was more than enough probable cause for the physical search warrant there, but the question was whether the juice was worth the squeeze. And she further said, quote, a lot of evidence in the investigation would be found in the guest house of former Vice President Biden, but there is no way investigators will get that approved. Now, do you agree with Ms. Wolf that optics of an investigation should be the driving factor in law enforcement decisions when I, I, I investigating just, potential crimes? I have to say again, as I said before, singling out assistant U.S. attorneys is a dangerous matter. The supervisor of that case is Mr. Weiss. He is the one who made the uh, decisions in that case. He is the one who can answer questions as to whether those things happened or whether so let's, they did. So let's take her out of the equation then. Let's just take the statement generally. Do you believe that optics of an investigation should be a driving factor in law enforcement decisions as to whether or not to execute a search warrant or not. The Justice Department has standards for its work and improper considerations are not part of those. The only questions are those driven by the facts and the law. Mr. Shapley also testified that AUSA Wolf objected to a search warrant IRS investigators requested for a storage unit purportedly containing all the documents from the vacated office of the law, law firm owned by Hunter Biden. Investigators scheduled a call with U.S. Attorney Weiss, who agreed that they could search the storage unit if it remained abandoned for 30 days. But immediately after the call, investigators learned that AUSA Wolf had reached out to Hunter Biden's defense counsel to tell them about the storage unit, effectively ruining investigators' chance to access potentially critical evidence. In your experience, as you said earlier, this is not the typical thing that happens, correct? 
Once again, I don't know anything about these allegations. I don't know whether they are correct or not. These are questions most appropriately put to Mr. Weiss at the appropriate time and to be covered in his report if he thinks that's the appropriate way to resolve Can you matter. conceive of a reason why uh, Mr. Weiss or Ms. Wolf would have given a heads up to Hunter Biden's legal team that the search of the storage unit was forthcoming? I'm not going to get into hypotheticals about this. For somebody that was involved in the investigation at that point who was literally delaying uh, obtaining potential evidence in the case, do you think it was appropriate that then she was uh, involved in the negotiation of the, of the, the IRS deal with Hunter Biden? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not actually following the question. Uh, I'm an assistant U.S. attorneys who participate in investigation, also participate in prosecutions. Uh, is that what you're asking? Uh, I mean, Attorney General, I, I, I appreciate mean, your time here today, but I'm concerned that these facts are just some examples of uh, what's been going on here uh, where, uh, I apologize, I know my time's out. I yield back. Thank you for your time. time to jump.